Inkscape to take a photo and kind of split it into a bunch of snapshots. Um, the first thing I'm, I need to do is um, change the document properties a little bit. I will change the background to be fully opaque and slightly gray. We're going to be doing some white frames around these photos so it's a bit easier to work with a gray background. And also I'm going to turn off the page border which uh, just removes that order of the sheet, uh, the default sheet. Next I'm going to import a bitmap to work on. I'm going to choose this one, zoom in a little bit, and uh, so we've got a nice picture here. I will select the picture and I will choose um, object, pattern, objects to pattern. Now it is a rectangle uh, infilled with a pattern that matches that bitmap. Okay. Next I'm going to create my, uh, my snapshot frames. So what I will do is uh, I'm, I like to use square ones. It doesn't matter what size you use, what shape even uh, for this exercise really, but uh, we'll stick with a square shape, something like this. I'm going to change the opacity down a little bit just uh, because I'm going to create a duplicate of this object. So I'll select the first one, hold Control D, and create a duplicate on top. And with that duplicate selected, I'm going to hold Control Shift and drag one of these corner arrows in to create my frame. Now I will select them both and choose Path Difference, which just takes the bottom one and subtracts the top one from it. So now we have our frame. Once it's selected, I'll hit Control shift f to bring up the Fill and Stroke dialog box. And I'm going to change that frame color to something that's just an off-white, something like this. Okay, And I'm going to make it fully opaque again. So there's our typical photo frame. Now, what we do here is I'll probably put three, split this into three photos, so I'm going to create two duplicates of this, so I have three frames. Here's Once it's selected, I hit Control D, and I get a duplicate. Select it again, hit Control D, and get another duplicate. And now I can just arrange these in my photo, uh, or over top of my photo. I like to rotate them a little bit to make it a little more fun. Um, and you arrange them the way you want. So say we arrange this one slightly the other way, and this last one will be a lot of overlapping, but uh, we'll say, okay, let's do it this way. Actually, we can take this one and probably move it up this way. So th that's how I'm going to split my photos. Be careful that you keep, you watch out for problems like this where the photo is not inside the frame. You want to grab this one and bring it up. So you want to make sure the frames are, and you can rotate them, tilt them, 
move them side to side, but you want to make sure that their inside of the frame is completely filled with that pattern. Once I've done that, I'm going to take uh, and create duplicates here. I'm going to select the object behind, the rectangle. I'm going to hold shift and select one of the frames. And I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate it. Or I think you do it from here, uh, Edit, Duplicate. I hold Control, the Control key, and drag that duplicate I've just created out to the side. So there's our first frame. Select the background again. Hold Shift to select the second frame. I hit Control D, create a duplicate, pull it across, and do the same for the third frame. So now I have um, my three frames with the backgrounds. Now, what I need to do to these backgrounds is actually change them into paths. I don't want them to be rectangles, I want them to be paths consisting of four nodes. So what I'll do is uh, I could select one or all three at once. In this case to demonstrate I'll select one and I will hit um, object or sorry path object to path here path object to path here uh, select this one path object to path. So now when I select the background you'll see it's a, now a path four node path. And this is where it, actually the, the really easy part is uh, if you double click it, now that it's a path, I can take nodes and just drag them without disturbing the pattern behind. Now the corner one always seems to give me problems. For some reason I can't select the node directly. I end up selecting this little X which moves the pattern, not what I want. Okay, So normally I grab that, move it, hit Ctrl Z, and now I can select the node. I'm not sure why it works that way. Um, and all you have to do is make sure that these nodes are, you know, not are hidden by the frame. That's all you're trying to do. So I'll try and do the other two a little bit quicker to demonstrate how easy it actually is. It would also be a lot easier if I was running this full screen uh, and not minimized or almost minimized for the screencast. So that one looks good. And again, done. You can just give them a quick check over everything looks good. And now what I do is I take each pair, the background and the frame, and I hit control, I select them both and hit control G to group them as one object. That just makes it easier when I'm working with them after. So now we've got our three photos. We can now line them up approximately and you can zoom in and get that alignment the way you want it exactly. And the reason I kept everything horizontal when I, when I move things, I hold control and drag things to the side because then I can keep the alignment. It just makes aligning things easier later on. So there's my real you know, snapshot effect. That's what I'm trying to achieve right there. Uh, one other thing you can do that looks nice sometimes is to uh, duplicate all of this stuff split apart each of the photos that we've created. Now if I select the first one, um, what I'd like to do is, sorry I shouldn't have done that, is select this one and ungroup it. Okay, You can use the, this button here to ungroup it. Actually you can select all of these and ungroup them. And now what I'd like to do is to create a union between these two things. So I would, uh, if you use the menus, you'd hit uh, Path Union. Don't worry about the bitmap right now. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Path uh, Union, Path Union. Now if I select all of those, obviously it looks a little weird. I'm going to bring up the Fill and Stroke dialog box, Control Shift F, and I'm going to change right now, the fill is still a pattern, I'm going to change it to black solid. I'm going to blur that. You can probably see where I'm going with this. And I'm probably going to just reduce the opacity a little bit here. Make it more of a gray. Okay. 
And now what I can do is take that and arrange it as a shadow underneath. And once it's over top, I can hit page down, make it a shadow. Bring this one over, same thing, and hit page down appropriately to make it a shadow. And here, again, hit page down to make it a shadow. So now we have a more realistic um, effect. You can adjust things, obviously, if you want your shadow to be more centered under each photo. You can do that as well. It's sometimes a nicer effect. And, uh, and there we have our, our snapshot effect. I hope you got some use out of it. You can get, you know, like I said, you can use different frame shapes. Um, obviously, a rectangle is going to be easier, uh, but you could do fancy things like odd shapes. Um, all you'd have to do is uh, create more nodes around that rectangular image we started with. Um, you know, this image here, right now, if I double click it, um, sorry, if I turn it into a path, it has only four nodes, um, but you can use tools uh, to create more nodes uh, all around the sides of that. So if you wanted uh, some odd shaped uh, frame, you could create a bunch of nodes and then uh, drag them all under that frame the same way we did. So that's it. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, tutorial and thank you very much for watching.